Premier Doug Ford's government and, and the debacle that's been going on between Lisa McLeod's uh, profanity-laden comments to Senator's owner, Eugene Melnick. A lot of calls for her to resign. She has, we understand, she has apologized to Melnick. This happening over Twitter. But we're not hearing a lot from Doug Ford on this, the leader, the Premier of Ontario. How would you grade how his, uh, his government is doing on damage control? Well, I mean, he's not. He made a phone call. He said he'd get Lisa McLeod to apologize, but that's simply not enough. This is totally inappropriate behavior for a minister of agent. I mean, she she not only. I mean, and this is particularly ironic because she's complained about the treatment that she's received, the bullying that she's received, and and she's been accused of bullying herself right. before. She's already been demoted in cabinet. Uh, I mean, I I just think this kind of behavior it has to be something that you stand against, and and for Doug Ford to sort of stay in the background and not remove her from cabinet at the very least, if not from caucus, mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a mistake. <clears throat> and he's already under a lot of fire for some of his policies. He doesn't need any more bad press. I, I just think he's he's letting this carry on for much too long and it's hurting him. Yeah, and this is this on top of uh, what's going on with Dean French. And now we've had three other individuals with connections to Dean French have also been uh, let go as well. What are your thoughts then? Because if we recall earlier in the year, there was this relationship between Andrew Scheer and Doug Ford. We know during Canada Day celebrations, uh, both of them were at the same event in Etobicoke, we understand. Scheer trying to distance himself from, from Ford. Do you think he, be he could become a liability, Doug Ford, that is, come the fall? Yeah, but I, I mean, he is a liability, um, but, but not primarily because he's not being decisive in dealing with inappropriate behavior amongst ministers. The reason he's a liability is that the policies that he's proposing are um, are unpalatable to Canadians in a, in a broader sense. Mm -hmm. And so if conservative policies and this conservative coalition gets associated with Andrew Scheer, <clears throat> then that there will be more questions, more doubts about whether he ought to be trusted with, with government mm -hmm. at the federal level. So uh, again, uh, Andrew Scheer has, has to sort of walk this tightrope where on the one hand, he embraces the coalition and the policies that, that they are sort of collectively working on, for example, the carbon tax. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, somehow managed to to um, reach that very rich pool of, of, of voters, particularly Ontario. Right. Uh, so it's a, it's a really tough tightrope to watch. And, and I think this coalition, uh, particularly on the policy uh, front, is looking at cuts and the impact of cuts and all of those kinds of things are, are going to make it much more difficult for Andrew Scheer to succeed in October than it would be if Doug Ford were Premier of Ontario. Yeah, we'll see what color things turn in Ontario come the fall. Laurie Williams, political science professor at Mount Royal University. Always a pleasure chatting with you, Laurie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angie.